I just want to, uh, I don't know if it's possible to have the spotlight over me slightly dimmed because I need to be able to see you. <laughs> and it just catches the top of my glasses, so I can't. It's probably small enough if I come down, is it? Is it all right? Okay, I'll come down. Uh, I don't know really where to start because I came in and I sat down and I noticed we were singing, Holy Spirit, we're ready for you. And the Lord whispered in my ear and said, they're not. They don't know what's about to come. And it's not because I'm here, but I just believe I've come at a time where the Holy Spirit wants to flood the valley, if you like, um, and I really enjoyed the passion from the man that was up there. Uh, do, you, do you know R. Morris? You see, well, I've been on the earth a lot longer than some of you. And Morris, we're all, yeah, we're all taken to Morris Sorello in London. And it, it was the first time we'd ever seen a thing. We get near Morris, nobody touches you, and we, there's about 20 rows of people. We all fell flat on our backs. We didn't know what was happening, but Morris is the mo was the most passionate, faithful. He's 92. He's been miraculously he healed of a flesh-eating disease on his leg. You know, God is so committed to... to he was a little orphan Jewish boy at 16. I always remember his story. I was a little Jewish orphan boy. And God showed him heaven and hell. And he, he, he was grabbed by Jesus. And he started straight away. And he's never stopped. And we saw the most amazing things happen. They used to carry him into the meeting sometimes. He was so out of it. But it wasn't flaky. It was, And he had a passion for the... Afro-Americans and everything, which we had quite a lot of, and the Jamaicans and the Indians. Now, they used to flock to his meetings, and people used to get delivered of all sorts of things, but there was no hype with it. It was a passion. And I just think, when that guy got up there, I said to my friend, oh, he reminds me yeah. of Morris. <laughs> he talks like Morris. It's the passion. You've got to be who you are. Realize who your idea is. And I, I just, I'll let in get on. Be, but you were singing. You see, the thing is you can get into a rut. You can get into a routine and you just keep singing the same things. But actually, the door in heaven is open. Did you know that? It's a, John said in Revelation, I saw a door in heaven and it was open. So why are we singing about opening the door? And when we say, you know, like, come more, all this, God says, look, I'm here. You can have all that you want. Just help yourself. Amen. And so we've got to get, get that in my mind. And I think um, this morning that God's going to bring out people to know that they're his treasures. <laughs> and he's going to bless you socks off. <laughs> and and give you what your heart's desire is. And when the lady was worshipping, I didn't know that she was a pastor's daughter, and I thought, gosh, they must be proud of her. But she reminded me of darling Z, uh, what, uh, Czech, because I know they're Bethelites here, but uh, <laughs> let's go to Bethel. Um, but she carried something that I saw in darling. And I, I didn't see her like Bethel, although that's, I love Bethel, but I saw that and I thought, darling, had such an influence, such, she, her influence has gone on and on with worship and that's who I saw. And I think God sees in us all these different things, we categorize everything, but God has created us with a purpose before you were born, he knew you and everything about you, and you got to accept yourself and who you are, and then it flows even more, you know. But I saw those two things on those two people. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Amen. 
as you know, Idaho is the gem state. Uh, many years ago, I was in Coeur d'Alene. And um, uh, Chuck Pierce had been through and Bob Jones had been through and prophesied revival would start on April the 1st. Uh, I didn't know this. I was the speaker on April the 1st. I walked into Gateway Church and there was an angel standing on the platform. And uh, just as they're taking the offering, the uh, very large Polish guy um, was standing within that far of me. He got covered in gold dust. He had like an inch and a half across his bald head. <laughs> It went all over his shoulders. It went all down his arms. It covered his hands. And he got 39 50 carat jewels drop out of heaven. And that all started that particular day. Um, I came in and there was a certain beat. And according to Bob Jones, angels march to a certain beat. And there was a certain beat this morning and I, I couldn't see any angels on the platform, but I could feel them guarding this whole congregation, this whole meeting this morning. It's not because I'm here, it's just his time. And he wants to really do something. And uh, I heard the passion in our brother that God's going to turn the world upside down. God's going to turn Idaho upside down. And Coeur d'Alene, as you know, is the heart of a hammer. And God made it as soft as butter. If you're known for sort of poverty and not very good education, God's going to turn it on its head. He's really, going to, he's really going to take the passion plus the work that he's already done in you, and he's going to supercharge it. Because what he said to me this morning, you can sing, Holy Spirit, we're ready for you. But sometimes he comes in like an express train. <laughs> sometimes he comes in like a hurricane. Sometimes he comes in as a gentle breeze. But we have no control of how he comes in. And I'm, I'm going to be talking a little bit about healing. Uh, because I've been involved in it for close to 50 years now. And at the time God called me, I couldn't speak two words without stammering. And I had absolute faith God couldn't heal through me. I didn't make a wrong statement. I made a correct statement. I had absolute faith it wouldn't work if I prayed. Because I was the sickest person I knew. And I actually told God, are you crazy? And God said, uh, I had the same trouble when I called Moses. Would you like an Aaron? And I said, no, I would not like an Aaron. I, I don't want an Aaron. If you called me, I want to see some of this stuff. And uh, I probably saw 3,000 people get healed before I believed that maybe God's called me to a healing ministry. And in the last 50 years or 40 odd years, I've seen every... Every single miracle recorded in scripture except for the actual person who hasn't got an arm growing one. Everything else I've seen. It was really crazy. I was in Denmark one day and I was preaching in a big Lutheran church in Denmark and the sort of priest said to me afterwards, please could you come and talk to me privately? And he said, I've got this tropical disease. And I'm going to have to give up the priesthood because I can't baptize babies any longer. And I thought he meant malaria. And so I'm praying for him, you know, I curse this disease of malaria. I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. And I go back to England and uh, about six months later I get invited back to the church. And the priest climbs up into the place where they all preach from way up on high. And he says, uh, this is probably the last time that sort of Ian Andrews will be in this church. And I thought, what went wrong last time and why bring me back to tell me? <laughs> and he said, well, 
Last time, I asked him to pray for me, and I was the only known leper in Scandinavia. Now, I pray for malaria, and he gets healed of leprosy. Work that one out. <laughs> it really doesn't depend too much on us. I mean, God is looking for channels that he can flow through. That's it. How many people have heard of treasure hunts? All of you. Okay, well, uh, I, I, I think the first one I heard from Bill Johnson, it related to the very famous one of some sort of teenager going to get a donut. Have you all heard this one? Oh, man, you missed the best one ever. Uh, I think it was Kevin Dedman's son was hungry, and he went to get some donuts. And I don't know, I, I don't know quite which supermarket he went to, but he collected his donuts, and then he goes to cashier number 16. And he looks at the girl, and she's got hearing aids in both ears, and he says, oh, no, God. Um, I don't want this. I mean... I've just come for donuts. I'm hungry. I need donuts. And now you put a sick person in front of me, and I have to pray for them. And when I pray for them, the problem is I'm going to get words of knowledge. And when I get words of knowledge, I'm going to be here, and really, I'm hungry. <laughs> I just want to get the donuts. And so Kevin's son sort of, sort of uh, talks to the assistant and says, would it be all right if I prayed for you? And she said, oh, that would be very nice. Now, she's not expecting his hand to come over the desk and <laughs> plop. And uh, <laughs> it's amazing what God can do if you take that first little step. And he prayed for her, and big pop, pop went kind of in both ears. And, um, and she found she had instant healing, and she could hear everything. Now, what, what, what nobody knew except her, when she put her arms down on the desk in shock, she flicked the tannoy system for the entire store. <laughs> and she says, God is in this place at the moment. <laughs> and it went all over the supermarket, you know. God is in this place. Now, I mean, can you imagine it? It's like some people ran to the front and some people ran to the back to get away from God. <laughs> and then God started to have fun because he had a few words of knowledge. He said, somebody's got carpal tunnel. Oh, he said, I, I really don't want to go and look for them. I, I just want to get my donuts and go. Oh, she says, no problem. And she flicks the sort of switch again and says, if there's anyone in the store with carpal tunnel, please come to check out number 16 for your healing. <laughs> it's crazy. Then he gets another one. Well, there's somebody with a hip that's got a problem. Okay, so they flick the switch again. If you have a hip problem, come to check out number 16 for your healing. And they've got the carpal tunnel person comes up and gets healed. And then they've got the electric wheelchair person who's got something wrong in the hip. And they hurtle up. They do like a hairpin bend straight out to check out number 16 and jump out the wheelchair. Healed. He has to preach a little sermon to explain what's happened. I don't know, 20 plus people got here, so, sort of actually gave their lives to Christ. He goes home and he realizes he's forgotten his donuts. <laughs> and Kevin's got masses of stories of treasure hunts. But I think the best one I hear is a group of teenagers get together and pray. Okay, God, we want an experience in the Holy Spirit. What do we do? And one teenager got a white house with green shutters. 
one teenager got the word left, and one teenager got arthritis, and one teenager got George. And they got all excited. They thought, okay, we've got to look for a house with green shutters. We've got to go up. We've got to bang on the door, and George is going to answer. And he's going to have arthritis, and we're going to get, and we're going to get him healed. And they jumped into a car and said, which way do we go? Left. And they came down to a T-junction and they said, where do we go now? Left. And they're driving down the road, that stop, because you've got this white house with green shutters. And they go up to, the, up to the door, bang on the door. Gentleman answers, they say, George? <laughs> of course, the rest is history because he was George. He did have arthritis, and he got healed. <laughs> and the wonderful thing about this, it wasn't anyone famous. It was four ordinary people. And so one day, God spoke to me and said, if they can do it in the streets, I can do it in the church. Because I've got treasures sitting in the meeting. And some treasures can give, but they find it really hard to receive. They prefer everybody else but them. And so God has got to dig them out of the field called the church. And the first time I tried it was nearly the last because um, uh, one of the things God wants to do in this is stretch our faith. And I had a group of Christians, committed Christians, 140 of them. And they were sort of in this conference and I did a treasure hunt. I just prayed the Holy Spirit would move over the whole congregation and four people would immediately get a picture or a word. And four hands shot up and I said, okay, come on out. We're going to find the treasure. And the first picture was a prison wall. This is a Christian gathering. A prison wall with razor wire on the top. A cave. A beautiful feeling of peace and a Florida sunset. And two smoke rings blown from a cigarette. And it's like, I'll never do this again. <laughs> and one man, bless his heart, put his hand up. He said, it's me. I said, you better come on out, sir, because I want to know what these clues mean. He, he said, well... Long time before I was a Christian, I, I did some time in prison. I came out, I had no money, I had no support, I had nothing, and I thought, it's so easy to go and actually commit another crime and get some money. But he said, I didn't want to do that, so I went to live in a cave. I've never heard of this. It was bizarre. And I had no peace. I couldn't find peace except as the sun was setting, I would sit on the beach and I would watch the sun go down. And then I felt peace. I've got emphysema, he said, but I can't get healed because I can't stop smoking. I said, that's where you're wrong. You're the treasure. God's about to heal you of emphysema. He's about to give you two new lungs. And you don't have to worry about smoking because it's not going to be an issue after the Holy Spirit wax you. <laughs> and that's what happened. I've done it hundreds of times since, but I want to give you one more small example. So in England, I was doing a conference, and there was one lady there who was the treasure. The clue was, I see it beautiful wood-built home. We don't have those in England. It's, it's a beautiful log home. And the front door is on fire. That was the first clue. The second clue was a blue rowing boat just, just in a sort of estuary. The third clue was a Dutch windmill. A big Dutch windmill. And the fourth clue was a pack of playing cards with the 
case of diamonds right on the top. And we had this lady come out and she said, well, I can relate to three of the clues, but not the fourth. I'm desperate. I mean, okay, come on, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and she came out and I said, what was the house on fire? Oh, she said, that was my house. It was my parents' house. It caught fire. I escaped through the front door and it was blazing. And then she said, and my parents always told me the wrong child survived. Because my brother died in the fire. And that was the end of the family name and the end of the family line. I said, okay. What about the rowing boat? It's the one place in the world I can sit in my rowing boat. I don't go anywhere, but I sit there and I feel comfortable. What about the Dutch windmill? That's the painting over my bed that I look at every night before I go to sleep. But I have no idea what the, what the playing card means with the ace of diamonds. I said, I know exactly what it means. This is how God sees you. The main card, the ace, and a diamond, a jewel. What we didn't know was that she got permission for one day to come to one meeting from a secure mental hospital that she'd been in for years. She never went back. Totally healed by God. And so, I'm just going to start this morning by just praying the Holy Spirit will land, that the Holy Spirit will speak to four people. As soon as you get a picture come in the back of your mind, like a, a, a grizzly bear. Now, just as I said grizzly bear, how many people could kind of picture it in the back of their mind? Okay, well, that's how this works. It's very, very simple. And I'm, I'm just going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come now, Lord, and just cover this congregation with your presence and a spirit of revelation. And I need four people to get a picture quickly, one after another. The first picture you get in your mind, put your hand up high. If you'd come out, sir. I need three more pic I need three more people to get pictures. Uh, right, if you'd come. I need two more. Yes. Okay. Right, now let's find the treasure. Um I think you put your hand up first. Uh, it was a, a really high um it was like a mountain top that you could just see over uh, just like multiple mountains and they were all covered in um, like fir or pine trees. Okay. You saw a waterfall, a lot, lots of water and looking in wine, just waterfall. Okay. Trees, trees with some fruit on it, different fruits on some trees. But there was, there was one, there was one particular really big tree yeah. and then it was surrounded by some other little trees. Okay. I just saw a really, really old, old building uh, with old wood and a really, like a really um, strong light on top of the building. Like it lit up the whole facility, whatever it was. It was just an old, old little house. Okay, now somebody here can relate to those four pictures because to you, they're not just ordinary pictures, they have a meaning. Either you've lived in a building like that, that that just caught the light, or you love waterfalls and you love going to where they are, or you just like being on top of a mountain range and looking forever into mountains. It applies to at least one person. All these clues 
are resonating with one person, at least. All right, please come. And I don't know if the chairs come apart, do they? Good. If you could bring one. Thank you very much. Um, water, water. I had a dream of water fall coming down where we were. And what about the other picture? The other. Um, I saw a couple, and it was my uncle, and he passed away several months ago. And they were standing in the dark, and then when they got on the pit on the truck that they used to drive trucks, uh, they were going to get out of there, and then they couldn't get up. And then that's when I saw the waterfall coming down, and it was okay. clear. Okay. Do you have any physical need? Do you need healing from anything? How long ago did you say this person died? Uh, probably November last no Well, I think it was. Uh, I'm thinking, I forgot, uh, like, uh, I'm thinking like in February. Yeah. Okay. If you'd have a seat. Do we have anyone else who's, who thinks they can no longer claim this because it's already been claimed? Because that is a lie. I mean, God's got... Anyone else that has got a story that relates to these four pictures? We need another chair. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. If you'd like to have a seat. And can I have another chair? Okay, all right. Just tell us what the four pictures mean to you. So one of the, <laughs> my name is Aspen, and all four of them mean something. Yeah, okay. Um, Do you have any physical needs or not? A couple. A couple, <laughs> all right, you're gonna get here. The, mount, the mountain top. I'm always striving to be on top of that mountain with Jesus climbing up. The waterfall is freshening. Um, also, I see that cabin with the, with the, whatever it was, building with the light as security, as something precious to uh, go to. And the trees, just the beauty of nature. Okay, right. So we got three treasures. What I want you to do is to treat them like a treasure. Reach out to the Holy Spirit. Don't pray about the waterfall or anything sort of like that. But each pray over each one, and you'll see a transformation take place because God is healing. And we don't know what the problems are, but we'll find out afterwards, okay? So if you'd like to start, sir, seeing you were number one. What I want you to do is to put your hand very, very lightly. And the lighter you put your hand on, the more the power of God is going to flow. And then just ask the Lord, what do I pray? I'm trapped. What do I pray? What do I pray? Yeah. And after that, pray. Lord, I, I, I pray for um, just like a, there's an internal organ issue. And, and, um, and I just keep getting the word liver. And so, um, okay, pray. so Lord, uh, I pray for a well liver. Lord, and, and um, Lord, out of faith, kidneys. And so, Lord, um, kidneys and liver, and I, I, I speak wellness. I speak the, the power of the living God to come upon this woman's body. And 
over. Every stripe that you took in love for her, Lord, I pray that she would come to a full understanding of that. By the, by the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus, you took every bit of that illness, every bit of, of her suffering, Lord, and you created her to be well, to function in full health. Holy Spirit, come. God bless you. Thank you. Who was number two? Lord, I thank you for the people that are going to be surrounding her. Lord, I thank you for the new love that you're going to be surrounding her with through the people. Lord, I thank you for the new branches that you are bringing in. Lord, I thank you for the water that you are putting on the fruit. I thank you for each individual person that is bringing the fruit. Father. I thank you for the growth that is coming. I just lift up my sister, Lord, you know her need, God, and I just pray, Lord, that you will fill, that you will fill her cup. I pray, God, that you will renew her strength like the eagles, Father God, that you will turn her ear to hear your voice clear and loud, Lord, like never before, God. We silent every voice of this world, every distraction, that she will be able to identify your voice. Because your word says, God, my sheep will hear my voice, Lord. Right now, I just silent every voice of distractions that tries to confuse her from hearing your voice in your direction, God. In the name of Jesus, I silent all that noise that comes with this waterfall. Waterfalls are beautiful, but they are noisy, God, that she will be focused on you and not in the distraction, but in you alone, God, in Jesus' name. I ask the Holy Spirit to show me and send me a message. And I see this bright light over this old building that reflects the light that she's feeling that's going to guide her in whatever she is going through. This bright light is going to show her the path I'm going to give her the strength that she needs to get there.
In Jesus' name, amen. Great. If I can start with you, how do you feel having to do that? Um, it's definitely a step of faith. You know, it's, um, you know, one thing that I've learned that is every time that you experience faith, it's, it's a different angle in which it challenges you. Yeah. And this was yet just a different angle at which you have to you know, exercise your faith differently. But did you feel something happened as you exercised your faith? Um, it's just like, um, you know, it's like the presence of the Lord comes upon you so differently that you just, you know, even my emotions can't control it. That's beautiful. And how about you? Um, I've, I've done some of this before, but there was uh, there was definitely something that was just I could actually see the trees moving and stuff, and um, almost like coming forward. And then um, in my body, I could just I could literally feel it releasing. Yeah. So. It, it's really good when God uses you, isn't it? For me, I always, um, whenever I pray for people, I always see myself as just a channel that God wants to flow through. And so I just completely silent my mind, my feeling, emotions, ideas, preconceived ideas, and just said, God, why do you want me to pray for these people? And for some um, strange reason, God allows me to feel what they're feeling. Right. And as I start releasing what God is saying, it just flows. It just flows. Right. And how about you? And for me, this is new. 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 Wonderful. New. I've never, ever experienced anything like this before. And did you like it? Yeah, it was just, I feel it's a sense of, um, a sense of peace. Yeah. And it's, it's, I feel the peace within. Wonderful. It's, I've never done anything like this before. So my family's probably looking at me like, what are you doing up there? <laughs> Because I've never done anything like this. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Okay. I don't want you to get embarrassed, but I mean, what happened to you while they were praying? Uh, well, I do have some issues going on with some organs. Yeah. So and it's kind of hoping for an eyesight healing, but <laughs> not worried. <laughs> the lighthouse. Yeah, so she confirmed that it might be a lighthouse that she saw. And so. It's internal organs as well. Uh -huh. Especially gallbladder, but okay. yeah. Well, that's just above the liver. And <laughs> spot on. <laughs> spot on. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I don't know who prayed for me, but... Um, it doesn't, does it? Because it was all God anyway. <laughs> um, shoot. Um, the thing was with the, I, I'm always seeking, but it seems like when they mentioned the waterfall uh, being noisy and that the noise does not let you go through what you need to go through because there's too much outside. But also with the hearing is that I need... Um, I do have problems with my ears. I got hearing aids, and I have not been able to hear real low tones, but, you know, like men speak real low or some old ladies speak real soft. Uh, and also, I think what that was a, also a picture, which I am also having problem with my eyesight, and I think that brought that to the forefront too. Okay, good. And what about you? I felt the presence of God and the waterfall to me that's uh, when it's coming down, that's the spirit. Okay. And, uh, and I asked me about my health. Well, my eyes, I mean, I'm having lots of problems. <laughs> I just remember it's my eyes. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I think we should give them all a clap, don't you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you'd like to be seated then, thank you. Um, if you could come a minute. No, the man behind you. 
Morisarello number two, or whatever it is. <laughs> How are you, brother? Um, do you have any desires to be an evangelist? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Well, um, one of the things God put in the Latino people, particularly, is passion. And Morris Sorello just kind of waves his hand over the congregation and says, be healed in Jesus' name. But he doesn't say it from his throat. He draws it up out of his spirit. And it's a spirit-filled word that's creative, power. And he says, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, you don't have to do it like that. But I don't want it to come from your throat. I want you to draw it up from the well of living water that you've got bubbling up inside you. And just put your hand out and believe it's, it's connected to one of God's flamethrowers. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> and I'm expecting God to heal somebody in each section as he says it. So if you need healing, close your eyes, relax. Do not strive, do not pray, do not speak in tongues under your breath, <laughs> nothing. But put your hands up like a little child ready to receive. It's all yours. I just really Start felt this. Over there and just go like that. Okay. So, Jesus. So, right now we're just saying be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name in this section right here. Be healed in Jesus' name. To this section. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. To this section, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And to this last section, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. So, before we find out, how do you feel? On fire. <laughs> On fire. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Okay, how many people felt the Holy Spirit? land on them and touch them in this section. One. No, there's more. Two. Okay. What about this section? One, two, three. Four. Two, four. I want six in this section. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means we've got one, two, three, Four. I need another four. Five. Okay, we've got five in that section. One, two, three. If you put your hand up, come on out quickly. The price is right. Run to the front. It's not quite Morris Sorello with 5,000, but it's a good start. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, why don't you interview them just briefly and say, how did God touch you? It's not my fruit, it's yours. So let's go together. <laughs> okay. Start here. Okay, and how did God touch you? He touched me good. I felt him. If my pain is gone, and I'm happy. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Now I can walk better. Okay, let's see you walk. Joey, how did God touch you? I just felt like a like a wave, like something just hit me, and um, I don't know, just taking it. Awesome. Okay. And how did God touch you? 
Um, I had a lot of pain in my neck and my shoulder, and I just felt relief. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I have it every day for the last 10 years. And you still have it? Yes, I feel better. Awesome. I feel better. Uh, do you mind if I actually touch you? Yeah. All right. Wow, thank you, Jesus. And you don't have any pain? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, for the last three months, I've been working at a trailer factory, which we built big uh, haulers. And uh, my sh I've really, really stretched out my muscles. Uh, they said I've been working like a 40-year-old man, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm about... I'm not that old. I mean, I'm not that young anymore. But God, uh, well, the last service we had, they had a healing service, and God touched me, and I couldn't raise my hands. Because oh. I've been stretching this when we had to put a lot of stuff on these trailers. But this morning, when you, you said prayer in, in Jesus' name, yeah. I felt more strength in my arms. Awesome. I mean, I painted all night uh, on our inside our house, and I don't feel the pain today. Awesome. And, I, and I thank God for that, that Jesus came. Yeah. Amen. And, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, good. For me, I, God said, you're healed, and my eyes still is dry, but I can feel like moist right now. Wonderful. Just receive it. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Yeah. What happened? Um, I like felt I felt like my God was giving like my spirit a shake and like my um, I could feel my spirit um, sh like get goosebumps and I have liquid in my bursa on my under my knee and I just felt like the liquid was going away like as it was I felt that shiver. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I just well sorry. Just like Dory, um, I got hit with a wave. And then once I went to walk up here, I could barely walk. It was like my legs were just so heavy with the presence. So there are different things I'm going to test out on my body, too. Awesome. Okay. Hi. Um, the same thing. I got hit with a wave, and then I just, it's like I just saw the Lord hand me this gift in front of me, and I didn't get to open it because I came up here. <laughs> but I took it. Um, and also, while I'm sitting here and everyone was talking, my, my left elbow has had, um, it's like tennis elbow. And it's been kind of just a real pain in my tushy because I've had to fix my house. And anyway, but I've noticed that it's not um, doing its normal little buzzy, achy in the meantime. So that's awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just felt my whole entire body tingling, which never happened. So that's good. <laughs> okay. And it's not just because I'm her husband. Oh. <laughs> I needed some peace and I could feel the fresh air. Of God, so I feel awesome. I feel the touch of God. Awesome, wonderful, awesome. And to you, sir. Hi, how's it going? By the way, that, that was great. I love it. The, the Holy Spirit, you just be healed, and you did it the way you did, you would do it, and it. I was just open, and it was a calming, very easy. Some people say the wave or whatever. It was just very calming, very easy, and I had. A pain in my neck that I hadn't had in a long time. I, it's really strange, but I was actually holding my neck before we did this, and there's nothing wrong now. It's, it's yeah. incredible. And the way when I, I've had an issue with dermatitis, just and it's I don't know. I'm not itchy anymore, awesome. so I don't I don't really know. But it was really calming and felt really great. So praise the Lord. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm very thankful. Awesome. That's great. Thanks, God. Well, I just felt a vibration, like a, and I mean, every time you were saying it, even if you weren't at my section, I just felt a vibration of, from heaven, and uh, God is just feeling that hunger, because I have such a hunger for more. I have a desire to see people healed, and my children and grandchildren to see people healed. Yeah. Um, same thing, um, just felt that peace that surpasses all understanding, and I know that I am completely healed. And an evidence for that, it was that uh, my wrist, um, it hurts, and I pray for it, and I know um, the pain 
um, was gone, but not 100%, and now it's completely free. Thank you. From the moment you opened your mouth, the Holy Spirit was everywhere. And uh, I'm like Renee, I have a longing for that in my life. And uh, I could just feel the Holy Spirit very powerful. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you can hold it. <laughs> I experienced just a big wave of love just filling this whole congregation, and I felt it in my body. I had a, a I didn't realize that right then and there, I had a back pain, and it's, I no longer have my back pain right at this moment, and it's not coming back. And I know that when you said those words, that it is put into us, and I know that I'm going to be healed from other things. I felt the power of God just whoosh over me, but I've had troubles with my stomach and headaches, and it's gone. It's gone. It's all to your glory. So when you did that, I felt like I was on fire, which reiterated what Christy prayed about me at VSSM the other day. Awesome. I just felt. <laughs> I knew you were coming up. <laughs> I just, when you were praying for that section, that section, I was being touched, just like a, a wave coming through that TD chair. <laughs> and I, that my leg was burning, the leg that I had fractured. It's not burning now. Awesome. And I believe that other healings took place in my body. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I have a finger that's been a growth on it. I've had it burnt off twice. It's come back again, and it's very sore. And I also have arthritis, and I just felt the presence of God mm. come over my head to yeah. my feet. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I think I got some of Pastor Barb's overflow. Yeah. But, um, and I, I need physical healing. I, I still need physical healing. But um, what I felt was each time you spoke that about the fourth time, you felt it, you got it, it went right through your spirit and right to me. And I was just overjoyed that you were receiving something too, you know, yeah. which is awesome because you are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Awesome. I think it was about the time that you, you were over on this side. Um, I really wasn't expecting anything, so I was kind of surprised, um, actually, because if actually what I, th I thought, does it feel like a wave? I th <laughs> this is going to sound kind of weird because I haven't heard anybody say it before, but it sounded like it felt like somebody coming up behind me and going, boo. It hit me hard in the gut, like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, okay, that was definitely something that wasn't me. So... Um, and I had had some gut issues, and that's where I, where I felt it. So awesome! Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just felt complete peace. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. By description would be that it was like an electrical current went from head to toe <laughs> through my body. And I've had some feelings, maybe misgivings, because I thought, well, it's just because I'm getting a whole lot of years on me, and will the Lord still let me teach? Will he still let me work? And will he still let me bless somebody else? And it was just like, I got a big electrical charge that kind of 
recharged my, my elderly body. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Tim. And when you were up there, I was really excited for you. And I knew it was like, it was totally a part of you. Like, it was so easy for things to come out so strong. <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to be good. So when you first said here, it wasn't like as strong. It was like every single one got stronger. But when it hit that third spot, I, I felt it. I think, I guess I was sitting in the third spot. So there you go. <laughs> um, I've been having a really crazy bad pain right here. And um, I'm, uh, I'm still believing God's going to completely heal me, but um, it, uh, it was just surrounding it like a, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know how to really explain it, like, almost like, a, a, you know, like a, when a wave comes over a surfer or something, it was just like, it did that, and then it just was going like this around it, and then, and then uh, swing around it, kind of like twister. And I just knew God had me. And, uh, and I was just like, I know this is going to be hell. And uh, at the same time, I was seeing just an angel basically going down each of the little rows. Um, maybe individuals. I, I don't know if it was one or individual of each time. But there was just gifts that was just being handed out to anybody that wanted to take it. And I... Uh, so, um, yeah, for, I, I personally believe that there's a little room that they have in heaven that they have every little part, every little thing that they need. And when people have enough faith for it, and even just faith and mustard, right, um, the angel's going to grab it. And that's just what I was seeing is the angel's going to grab it, and he's going to bring it down to each individual one of us that need whatever we need. I think we should give him a really big clap, don't you? This is just a couple of the ways God heals. Do you want to, do you want to learn sort of an extra way that God heals? Come this way. I understand you have a passion for healing, right? We're going to ignite it. Uh, Okay, just close your eyes a moment. Tell me if you can see in the back of your mind the shape of a man or a woman. I could see a woman. You can see a woman. Okay, now keep your eyes closed. What color hair has she got? Blonde. Blonde, okay. Is it long or short? Short. Short, good. Is she... Tall and slim, or of a different build? <laughs> Tall and slim. Okay. Uh, do, you know what, do you know what an MRI machine is? It's, it, it's the machine they have in hospitals that kind of scan your body. And it starts here, and it goes all the way through your body. And what I want you to do is put the lady that's blonde and tall into an MRI machine and start scanning her body and stop where you feel a little bit of pressure that you don't want to go any lower. Healing in her knee. In what she needs her healing in her knee. It's a problem in her knees, is it? Okay. Um, I believe we have a blonde-haired lady, or you're currently blonde, whatever. Uh, but you actually have a problem in your knees. Come quick. There you go. All right, now, what's the problem in your knees? I have a bone spur on my knee. Okay, right. So what I want you to do, because you've had a word of knowledge... That's what you've done. You've been able to pull somebody out that God wants to heal. And so you just put your hand on her knees. Don't command the knee to go. She needs it. <laughs> but just relax your hand and just 
ask Jesus to take away the bone spur and all the pain associated with it. Okay. How about yes, Jesus, I just command this bone spur to disappear right now, for it to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. That perfect healing will come to her knees right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, like, like electricity. Uh, all right, keep it there until it all stops. Don't press. Do not press. There is just a minute. That's it, yeah. I think she's cooked. <laughs> okay, okay, try it. Start walking a little bit and start thanking the Lord. <laughs> Is it easier to walk? Right. Pray again. I mean, Jesus prayed twice, so there's no shame in it. Why don't we stretch our hands out and believe for our sister? In your spirit, do you feel it's done? Have you got joy? I felt it kind of dissolving in my hand type of thing. Okay. Like something, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, that's good because some people get healed the same hour. Some people get healed the same day. But it says, ask and receive that your joy is full. You've got joy written all over you. You prayed the prayer of faith, and I would think by tomorrow morning it will all be gone. All right? Now, I'd like to take you a little bit further. It, it, okay. One of the ways the word of knowledge works is um, I, I see something, I hear something. Or I feel something. And I can be walking along and suddenly I feel like a slight pressure on my shoulder, a slight pressure in the elbow, and I'm right by somebody who's got that condition. All right? This is kind of the advanced school now. Are you ready for it? Can I, can I hold your hand a minute? And we're just going for a walk. I'm going to walk very slowly. And as soon as you get a pain come to your body, it's very intuitive and it's very faint. It's not like prophecy where it comes two or three times. It's just a faint pain. As soon as you recognize it, it's gone. But let's just walk and see what pain you can pick up. Have you picked anything up? You've got a shoulder pain. Who's got a shoulder pain around here? Right there. Okay, just, just go and tell your shoulder pain to go in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, who's got a heart flutter or you got something? 
wrong in your heart around here? That's you. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's your mum. <laughs> Let me help you because I know it, it gets difficult if you've got these strong soul ties and everything. I picked up the heart problem. Can I have your hand a minute? Father, in Jesus' name, I speak to that heart to be perfectly normal now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for touching her, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay. Right. You've got a heart issue? What sort of issue? Um, I have. It, um, it's a sinus arrhythmia, and I go into. I've had a couple of bouts of SVT in the past. Okay, all right. Do we have any children here actually in the meeting? Yes. Would you like to come? You can see a miracle. Um, I believe God's got a warehouse in heaven full of spare parts. Heidi Baker saw the warehouse. It's, it was full of eyeballs. Well, if God's got eyeballs up there, he's got hearts up there. If he's got hearts up there, he's got lungs up there. Amen. So, can you put one hand up to heaven? And just ask Jesus, send an angel to the warehouse and get you a new heart. And if you put your hand like that, when you feel something touch your hand, just smile at me, okay? All right. Uh, please, Jesus, just send an angel to the warehouse and get me a new heart. Have you got something heavy or, or some kind of picture? You don't have it. Okay, well, let's do it a different way. Just put your hand. And just say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. And heal this heart condition. And heal this heart condition. Lord, touch his heart. Touch his heart. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, can you feel... Anything in your hand, like heat or warmth or anything? Nothing. You're a lady of faith. <laughs> you don't have to feel it, but sometimes people do. Well, I believe that's done. Okay? Thank you very much. Do you want to keep walking a minute? Okay, let's go this way. Do you want to take her for a walk? Okay. <laughs> All right. Remember, the pain is hardly there. Have you picked anything up? Has somebody got a kidney problem around here? Okay, we'll get to you, but there's somebody here with a kidney. Okay. Do you want to put your hand on her kidneys? Just release the Holy Spirit through your hand mm. like that. Yeah, Holy Spirit, come. Kidneys to be healed in Jesus' name. Okay. 
Okay. So how does it feel? Feels very heavy, so for me. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Would you have any kidney pain? Yet. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's kidney. I don't know yet. Okay. I've been having really, really bad pain, and they don't know what it is yet. I go to an ultrasound tomorrow. Well, that's brilliant, actually, <laughs> because I came up and I got pain sort of around here. Here, there. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And all my pain's gone now, so I believe yours has too. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's keep walking. Pain in my hand. There you go. <laughs> right there. Yeah, okay. There you go. So I lose a lot of sleep, so I'm always getting up and I find myself just kind of... Is it hurting now? No, only like when I'm relaxed, taking too much, like jogging. Okay, I don't think it will come again, all right? Okay. Yes, you got... It's warm. Good. Okay. All right. I think we should give her a big clap, don't you? <laughs> Do we still have the young man that was, that was on the keyboards? Is he still here or is he gone? <laughs> have you ever prayed for the sick? I have. You have. Right. Um, one of the scriptures is that the kingdom of heaven comes by declaration. And in the Old Testament, it was David who played the harp and spirits left. And a lot of sickness is called by demonic influence. So I just want you to declare, first of all, that when I play, people are going to get healed. And what I want you to do is, is to point your hand out and say, people, 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 people are going to get healed. And then just play whatever you want to quietly for a few minutes, okay? Okay, try it. When I play, people get healed. People, people. People, people get healed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, you go up and play. Just get prepared to get healed. Close your eyes, shut yourself in with God.
Wasn't that beautiful? Didn't that bring the presence of the Lord in a wonderful way? Who got touched? One. Who felt the Holy Spirit land on them? Two. Three. Four, five. Six. It's not bad, is it? All you did was play. But you made a declaration of faith. People are going to get healed when I play. You can't just walk up to the keyboards and do that, obviously. But when you're in worship and you've got a depth of the spirit, that is the time to do it. And people will get healed all over the place. Because obviously God wants people healed. And uh, all those people that just got healed in the last few seconds. Stand up, if you will. Because I want him to be able to see. One, two, three, four. Do you want to interview them? Do you want to find out what they got healed from? Why don't you ask them to come forward? Yeah, if everyone who just got healed could come forward, please. I want to interview you real fast. Start from the right, then we'll go to the left. So, what did you have before I played? What was going on? Uh, I fell off of a ladder uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, um, um, Mac, it, it was a miraculous uh, healing that that came in the next few days. I mean, I never. Never felt so bad to feel so good so quick. <laughs> but uh, after it all, all that s subsided, I got back to my regular pains and aches. <laughs> and so uh, I was feeling some of those pains and aches, and uh, I don't really feel them anymore. That's awesome. Come on, Jesus. What was going on right before I played? I've had pain in my feet, and my hands for 10 years, maybe longer, and uh, there's no pain right now. Come on. What happens to you right now? I've had um, pressure, sinus pressure in my head for a couple of days now, and where it just like hurts so bad, and this, I close my eyes. I just seen the presence of God in his white garment, and me reaching out to it wanting to touch it and when I touched I just felt like the, everything just like just flush all over I just flush out of, out of my body and I don't feel the pressure there anymore completely gone <laughs> yes it's gone it's gone for me I can feel the Holy Spirit I can feel his presence and I can feel him healing everybody my, from from head to toe and I think Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I lost one of my sisters. Uh, she passed away. And I just needed the peace over because we moved down here, tried to help her and the rest of my family. And I never got to see her before she passed away. But God gave me the peace. I needed the peace over it. So when you spoke, I could just feel it, it was like, a shaking in my spirit and um, but when you started to play um, I'm on a thyroid medication for um, a diagnosed low thyroid but my like right in the back of my throat just got really really hot and I just I still feel very flushed like like very just like my like I'm overloading on like a high thyroid but you know, obviously it's not high it's normal and it's completely gone, any pain you had? Yeah, it's, uh, it's like still on the back of my throat. There's just still this, there's just this extreme heat. You know, it's like right back, you know, into this area. It's you know, right where my thyroid would be at. It's, it's just feels, it's still very hot. I've had over 20 treatments recently for scoliosis, which is a 
um, something wrong with your spine. And my back and all of my joints and everything back in here have been popping and snapping. And when you said what you said, and then you went up there and played, and I had my hands out to receive as a gift, I leaned forward and I thought, well, I'm just going to put my hand back. My fingers also were tingly, which they've been stressed a bit. And I had carpal tunnel, and I've been healed of that before here. So I, I claim that I have that healing. But I reached back, and when I reached back and touched that spot, and I leaned forward, it just felt like it popped into place. Come on. I feel like I carry a burden for my family. And when you started praying, I um, heard the Lord say, your people are my people. And I just felt a peace over me. Um, well, I still feel, you know, uh, some of my joints are being healed. Um, I have a degenerative joint issue. And when he started... Sorry. <laughs> I walk around in constant pain in my hands and in my feet and my legs. And I'm always in pain. And I just felt this warmth flush through my body. And I still feel like my legs are being healed. And my hands don't hurt for the first time. And this foot doesn't hurt to walk on for the first time. And, and there's a little bit of relief in this one. And I just know that God's going to continue to take away this, this disease out of my body. So that way I will be able to walk and then I won't be crippled <laughs> so so it's good <laughs> when you started playing I've had a little knot in my shoulder and after you were done it was completely gone I can't even feel it now when you started playing I love music, and I ministered it, and I'm, I'm just sitting there enjoying it, and all of a sudden there was a place deep inside of me, Start, and I started crying, and I, he says, you didn't even, I says, I didn't even know that was there. I had no clue, and he just moved deep into me of healing. As you was playing, Jared, the, I just felt the Holy Spirit flow over me and it took the pain out of my neck. <laughs> don't let it be the last time you do that. Okay, why don't we give them a clap? Yes, please. He's a big tease. <laughs> He's from England, that's why. And we have a terrible sense of humor. You, you can actually make jokes in a meeting and they all sit there like, don't move a muscle. Because we just like jokes that la we laugh at ourselves. That's, you probably find that out. You know, that's why we love all these sitcoms. Um, but I, we were, uh, my friend and I here, we were a bit strapped because... I said, oh, since I've been here, I've had stomach ache, and I don't have stomach ache. And I said, it must have been the water up, you know, when we went to the spa. And you didn't get it, did you? But, we, but I did. But actually, often when you get, I mean, I don't have, have it, it's not mine, and I thought it could be someone else, you know, and then a couple of people came forward with that, and I, and my friend and I were talking, and we said, well, we'll get all those people that have problems with their stomachs. Uh, hmm? I know what to do. <laughs> well, this is how we carry on, I'm telling you. We're just like you. And to stand up, and uh, you can actually get rid of it. 
whether it's colitis that you've had in a while, or what uh, any of those type problems, or whether you've just had it recently, anything wrong with your stomach, you can get healed of now, because uh, Jesus is the healer is here. There's no, it's not complicated. It's just like he gives out presents. And this is present day, there's one. Just all stand up with stomach problems. You can come and stand by me. Because she likes to... <laughs> no, no, we're not getting the... <laughs> we just we just <laughs> want this gone from this valley. No. Well, no more of this. Because I said it must be in the water. Well, do we drink in the water, okay? <laughs> now, now listen. And, and you, I've... Ha- and the lady in red, I was singing that song to myself this morning. I love it. Lady in red. You know, I love that song. And, and then I had my eye on you. And I thought, the Lord, you're one of his treasures. And I don't know anything about you. But I do know that God wants to answer what you've asked him for. And today you can receive what you've asked him for because he's heard your prayers he's answered your cry and he's got something special for you so you're included let's just like just the door in heaven's open we don't need to open any doors in heaven because John said I see a door in heaven and it's open and you can go in and out. Hallelujah. So just look at Jesus. And you know, the blood flowed from his head. I'd like to include those people that can't sleep at night. You have unwanted thoughts and you've been depressed. Can you stand up too? Because the blood flowed from Jesus' head. And everywhere the blood flows, You've been redeemed from the curse of sickness, mental dysfunction, unwanted thoughts. He healed all head problems. Anything wrong with your head, you can be healed of. And then the blood flowed when he was beaten with 39 lashes. And the blood is a currency of heaven for our redemption. It's... It's the fulfillment of the old. You know, when they had the sacrificial lamb, they had to have a lamb without blemish. Jesus was that one. And the blood flowed so you've been redeemed from all the curse of sickness. Whatever's wrong with your body, whatever's wrong with your hands, the nails went in there and in the side. You can have it all because he paid it all. The price is paid. If you've got dysfunction in your family you know the word that comes to my mind is forgiveness and you don't have to strive and try because he gives you a gift a gift of forgiveness he has forgiven you so that you can freely forgive you may not feel it but you can declare it because it's a gift he's given you the gift you can give the gift away he puts it in your hand to do and he's a restorer. And if you've got children that are wandering, no matter what condition, if you long for restoration and joy to come between your children or your grandchildren or your parents, then the Lord says, he saves you and all your household. You and all your household shall be saved, sozo, complete, together. He's paid for it. You can drink and feast on the lamb together. The moment you see that and receive it, God enables it to happen because you're not trying to save anybody. You're not trying anymore. You're just living in the good of what you have received from Jesus. And you will be amazed at what happens. That happened to our family. I didn't feel a thing. But I love it because 
God's got all these gifts, presents, everything that Jesus paid for to redeem the human race, including you and me, and to have all the benefits of heaven as it is in heaven, so be it on the earth, Jesus said to pray. So let it be, let it be, John Lennon and the Beatles sang. Let it be, let it be, hallelujah, joy coming. Father, I just thank you. Get ready to receive. Just see, see your debts cancelled. See provision for your household. If you need healing and anything I've called out, just start to receive. Oh, Heavenly Father, you're such a good dad. You love us so much. We're your, your precious treasures. We're the jewels in your crown. We're the delight of your eye. There's nothing that your dad won't give to you because Jesus came to settle the case. He fulfilled the old covenant. He fulfilled everything. He fulfilled the law. He identified himself with all sickness, pain, shame. Shame. You could be have shame on you. That's why you can't receive easily because you, you've been abused and you feel so shamed. And the Lord says, you know, I'll set you on high. I'll make you feel wonderful. I'll make you feel like a son and daughter. I'll put ring on your fingers, shoes on your feet, the robe, the family robe. Oh, that's so good. He carries a robe to you and he puts it on you himself, the robe of righteousness. He puts a crown on your head and he puts a scepter in your hand and he puts sandals on your feet and you belong. No longer an orphan, no longer a slave to fear, no longer outside the house, but in the house. In, come into the party. There's a party for you. I love it. There's music. There's dancing, there's feasting, and you don't have to take a small portion. You can actually help yourself and be greedy. God's, it's, he's, nothing delights your father more than you to be just taking everything that he's provided. He hates it when it's all on offer and you don't help yourself. But now there's no condemnation. You are a son, you are a daughter. Receive that spirit of adoption and be free from fear and shame. Oh Jesus, we love you because you are a brother and you died in our place and you nailed everything to the cross that was against us. And now you lifted us up to you, with you to sit in heavenly places with you. And you crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And the same dad that you have is our dad. And Holy Spirit, you come to live in us. And Jesus, you come to live in us. And Father, you come to live in us. And you said, as you are, so are we in this world. It's just incredible. And I just thank you, Lord, for just downloading all your benefits of healing, of love, of reconciliation. Just receive now all that belongs to you, the inheritance that you have, you can draw upon now. We just receive, Lord, healing, mental healing, no more sleeplessness, bad dreams, no more rejection, no more in Jesus' name. All those stomach problems, the anxieties, um, we just tell them to leave because Jesus is bigger, he's paid. We receive healing. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. And relationships and families, we receive those loved ones as saved into your kingdom because you said you and all our house will be saved. So we receive them as saved as belonging. And you 
who have felt outside the house. It's always others that get it, but not you. I just tell those orphan heart spirits to leave you and I lose the spirit of adoption to you where you can cry, Daddy, Father. I just, Holy Spirit, just download that upon these brothers and sisters. Put that robe on them and, and the ring on and the shoes on their feet and let them enjoy the party. From this day forward, I free you to do that. And I just release the Father's blessing. Receive, release the Mother's blessing. Those many people, even including men, never felt approved by their mothers. And so today I just say, receive that blessing that is yours. I just bless you. In the name of Jesus, I just bless you. And you shall go far, and you shall fulfill your destiny, and you shall have plenty and not lack. And as your days are, so shall your strength be. And goodness and mercy and fellowship shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the Father's house forever. Bless you. Peace, peace be with you in Jesus' name.